I once had something which now I can't find. It seems to have gone and left me behind. Now everything seems strange and misaligned. For this thing I have lost, you see, is my mind. I don't know where I left it. I've looked all around, from the books on the shelf to the rocks on the ground. I whistle for him, but hear back not a sound. They say the last place you look are where things are found. He wouldn't go out in public because he's frightened of faces. He usually prefers the wide open spaces. But one strong clue in this curious case is he has a tendency to go to very dark places. One cannot say where exactly he's been. I believe the gutter was where he was last seen. Surrounded by filth and all things unclean. He likes to play there, if you know what I mean. So if he was there and it started to rain, he'd swiftly be towed and washed down the drain. For no matter how hard he tried to refrain, he gets carried away easily, you know, for a brain. So with this information, one can be sure that sooner or later, he'd end up in the sewer. I know he'd follow its disgusting allure. I've never quite understood him. He is quite obscure. I'd like to interject on this particular note. I'm aware I always dwell where the horrid things float and of things about me which this must denote. So back to the story now, from this quick anecdote. He's only a small brain, compared to yours if you wish, meaty and juicy, with an irresistible squish. He would make a fine and delectable dish, and undoubtedly be swallowed by a very large fish. The fish would swim round, but sooner or later, she would arrive in the wrong crack, crevice, or crater. And before she knows it, something had ate her. And now she resides in a huge alligator, which would descend deep into the impenetrable dark, where dangers can't be seen by any known mark. And predictable, yes, this story arc, but the alligator is soon consumed by a shark. Deeper into depths, unspeakably cold. A place not reached by the brave or the bold. Such a mystery, what these caverns may hold. Creatures and beasts and monsters untold. And from here, tis needless to say, the shark would be devoured in the most horrible way. Monsters eat monsters, and at the end of the day, only the biggest one swimmeth away. And deeper still, into this void, live a race with which should not be toyed. Civilized and intelligent, and part humanoid, who hunt the beast for a feast to be enjoyed. They strip it completely, not an inch goes to waste, even the eyeballs which they mash into paste. And they eat up the stomach lining, for they just love the taste. But inside it is something they never had faced. A human brain would so excite them. They wish to study us, but we would just fight them. But such a perfect specimen does so delight them. Until, of course, it starts to bite them. For this is a brain of noteworthy distinction, which harbors a virus like a zombie affliction changing this tale from science to horror fiction and forcing this race into undead extinction. A survivor or two would sure make a stand amidst all the violence and chaos at hand. With their very last watery breath, it would be planned to return this vile curse back to dry land. So we reach the end of the tale, I must sadly confess. 
From here he makes his way back to my home address. Where my mind has been is really only a guess. But one thing's for certain, he sure is a mess.